All right, Days Confused, the studio version. Um, it's, I mean, a lot of it is self-explanatory. I mean, it's not voodoo magic. I mean, essentially, you know, he's just playing, you know. Okay, that's essentially it. You know, at some point, at some point it would be great if I could get, I'm going to get myself a Mac laptop and a, maybe a better camera and maybe a couple condenser microphones and stuff. But in any case, for now, and then of course, we're somehow work out where I can play along to the Zeppelin tune. I think there's a way on YouTube now to put some sort of a legal boilerplate to say this is for educational purposes or whatever. But anyway, we're all familiar with the studio recording of Days Confused. And if you're here, you're probably like, wow, I'm going to play with my band. And I just, what's that one little thing he does? All right. Well, the song kicks in. <laughs> Stuff. It's real sort of a ginger. I mean, he's playing hard, but it's it's swingy, it's notey. You know? um, so the general idea is that. So we go into the verse. Now, here's an interesting thing about Days Confused, the studio recording, and I've actually heard him do it live. He will invert the upbeat and downbeat in that song. In fact, in the in the studio recording that we're working on now, uh, it's. notice if you listen to the recording that um, in the second verse, the most of the second verse, the second part, and of course the last verse and the last part, the snare is on the is on the upbeat. So boo da 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 ba da 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 which is interesting. I, I personally think that they probably just learned the tunes real fast and I don't think Bottom was necessarily thinking about it. And he just went ahead and, you know, whatever he played at the time, that's what he did. Um, it is possible that maybe, you know, when the screaming guitar kicks in, maybe he did that purposely there. You know, that real, you know, cool sounding um, Jimmy Page, uh, the riff he does before the verse kicks back. In any case, just so you know, I, um, I think when I, when I would play with the Zeppelin band, I forgot what I would do. I think I would play uh, the upbeat without even thinking about it, just because you hear it on the recording, coming on that screaming guitar part before we go into the second verse. But in the second verse, I, I, if I remember, now bear with me here, I'm 42 and my memory isn't all that good. Um, God, I'm 41, I even remember that I'm 41. Um, but really though, I think on the second verse in the studio recording, he is playing the snare on the, on the upbeat, not just on the guitar lead into that. <laughs> It's not the end of the world, you know, you, however you want to play it. But he, even he switches it up. Go listen to the recording, you know what I'm talking about. All right. So anyway, so, um, so, da na 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 so. Then he goes, and then of course the studio recording. Now bear in mind the fills he goes in there, I mean, they're all pretty much variations of the same thing. So they won't have quite the same sound. Uh, and then he does that, and then into the whole um, 
And then, of course, we come to the... Okay? So... That's what I hear him doing. What if he could just be going? Of course, he could sometimes just be going. But anyway, I think it's mostly. And then you gotta remember in there, there's also. So it was probably a 22, could have been a 22 in Zildjian, you never know. Um, but let's say it was this 24 inch giant bean. Um, uh, so then, so then, the, ah, so then we get into the grandpappy. Song remains the same version. A lot of the live versions. He was really tired. He was playing like three-hour shows or whatever, and he'd just be like. Um, but in this recording, though, he does, and you'll actually see him do it. I think on the Super Show, on some of the footage. There's not a lot of footage of those guys from that. But the Super Show in London, and then um, and the Danish TV show, he does it. <laughs> stuff, if you crack your knuckle with the stick, it's going to hurt a lot. And if you're playing a show, you better be good at like taking pain, you know, like a boxer who gets like his wind knocked out. If he collapses, he's going to get his arse kicked by the other guy. If you're playing a show like that and you hit it, that's one of those real bone agony things. Play through it or, you know, you, you're going to stop the song, you know. Anyway, so he goes into that. <laughs> It's the same he does that too. Maybe he does it on purpose because it, it fits in there. There, so uh, 
Yeah, you know, and that's why, because the downbeat after, it's time-wise. Now, what, I guess what would happen is if he did play that the standard way, it'd be like... Neither here nor there. I guess what I'm saying is every time I've heard him come out of that part, he will do the snare on uh, opposite the intro of the tune. Again, like I said 500 times. And again, I think in the studio recording, if I remember, he goes into the verse like that. Singing here, yes, he's singing the last verse. Da, 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 da. Um, live on the on the on the on the on the song remains the same. I think it song remains the same version live. I think at that point he switches it back around to the. Okay, so then from there we go into the back into the the similar thing after the first verse. You know. 